So hello guys, long time no see. This is uh, Thomas from Two About Thule. Uh, unfortunately, Christy is, is missing in this video because she's she's meeting some friends, and um, I am on my way to Denmark, which is like an eight-hour drive up north, and I'm going to help out Mats from Sail Life to uh, lay up some fiberglass. If you don't know Matt's channel, he is doing a, a extensive refit of his sailboat Athena. It's a Warrior 38, and uh, he's doing all sorts of awesome DIY stuff. And I thought I'd lend him a hand this weekend. Um, yeah, so I don't know how much um, of a behind-the-scenes sail life I can sneak in there, but uh, we'll see. We have a long drive ahead of us. Whew. in Skiva and I'm going to look for Mats now. He's probably in one of the shacks behind me. So Athena is just here behind me in the shed and I'm going to take a look at her now. Follow me. It's okay now, but when we get to the wider sections of the deck, this is going to be very annoying. <coughs> and um, <coughs> we cut it up here because it's harder to transport upstairs. Uh, no, just because we—it's—it's a—it's a freaking dirt floor. Right? <laughs> yeah. we don't and actually, the the small threads that they use to to hold the, the fiberglass together are really handy when you need to cut it. Okay. You don't have to. The process we used to apply fiberglass to the deck followed five steps. First, we wetted out the surface thoroughly with epoxy using brushes, squeegees and epoxy rollers. Second, fiberglass was applied to the wetted out surface. Third, the just applied fiberglass was wetted out with more epoxy. In a fourth step, we made sure that there were no air bubbles trapped in the fiberglass layers by using the rollers again. We repeated the second to fourth step for three layers of fiberglass that weekend. And fifth, we applied peel ply on top of the last layer of fiberglass to get a nice and smooth surface once the epoxy cures. It's the first day of uh, behind the scenes sail life here in Skive and we uh, laid fiberglass the whole day on, on the foredeck. You can see Athena right behind me and uh, so that was a 12 hour uh, day together with uh, Mats and we worked the whole day through. And now we're getting some well deserved pizza I guess and the guys are just getting ready behind me. I need to dress and get out of my uh, work clothes. And yeah, then we're going to call it a day. 12 hours of laying fiberglass is pretty hard work. Sunday morning here in uh, Skive, Denmark, and uh, we just woke up. Uh, I was uh, allowed to stay the night on Sebastian and Camille's awesome 44 foot sailboat. Uh, thank you very much again for that, that was great. And now we're going to have breakfast uh, next to Matt's Athena in the shed, and uh, yeah, 
just see what the day will bring. Uh, luckily we laid up all the fiberglass yesterday, so today will be uh, an easy day I guess. And then in the afternoon I will head home back to Germany. Well, we finished up laying all the fiberglass yesterday, so today, on Sunday, our only jobs were to check on the cured epoxy and the fiberglass laminate and clean up around Athena since we left her in a pretty big mess. And the rest of the day before heading back to Germany, I enjoyed watching Matt's film for his YouTube channel Sail Life and take a look behind the scenes and how he sets up his camera and how he films and so on. Before we take a look... <coughs> <coughs> we'll try that again. That is laying up fiberglass. I mean, all of this stuff right here is just in the last two weekends. So, Mats, maybe give us a quick overview of the current status of your projects about Athena. Sure. Okay, so, um, well, she's been on the heart for about a year and a half, and we have just finished replacing all of the uh, core in the deck and laying down the new top skin. So, that's where we're at now, and over the coming weeks, I think we'll be fairing the deck and painting it. Else you'll move outside, and then things are gonna move inside the boat. So we're gonna be uh, removing the engine and replacing the seal around the sail drive and stuff like that. That's the current state. So Camilla, Sebastian, you two are supporting Mets. How did you meet Mets? Actually, I think we meet Mets in the marina over here when we were looking for a spot to our upcoming boat, which we have bought now. Yeah, we were uh, looking to buy a boat and uh, we were wanted to have a spot here in Skive. And at the, at the same time we started watching his videos. So uh, one day when we were in the harbor, we just went by his boat and said hello. And yeah, here we are. Actually, that went from a hello to a chat <laughs> that went on for, I think, two, two and a half hours or something like that. Yeah. Super, and um, tell us something about the boat you sail and what your sailing dreams are for the future. Um, yeah, well, uh, we have a Bavaria uh, 44 and uh, we have been liverboards now for just a little over two years. And um, well, we are planning, in, well, we are planning to go uh, cruising in a couple of years. So we start uh, starting to take a year down there in the mid, and uh, talking about to take a winter on the Canaries to see if the Atlantic swells is something that we can do because we have heard uh, a lot of people having problems when they go from this little little ocean we have up here in Denmark and then out in the big oceans. Uh, a lot of people who come to the Canarias and turns around or s take the boat on the heart and, and set it to sold, uh, to the boat market down there. Yeah, I hope that your sailing dreams will come true and everything will work out. And I really like how you support Mets here on Athena and yeah, keep on rocking. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So that concludes Thomas's adventures in Skiva. Feel free to like this video and if you haven't already check out our website sailingchannels.com and until next time, see you! Breakfast and some epoxy and some uh, 406 just for spreading on top. <laughs> Yay! <laughs>